Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. If you've been wondering where I've been for the past few days, well, I haven't had a chance to make a video because I, like many other people, have been anxiously awaiting the results of the American elections. And apologies if this is not what you signed up for when you initially subscribed to this channel because uh, you guys know that usually I don't talk about politics or political news on this channel. Uh, but when you have an election as contested as the one that we're having right now, you bet I gotta talk about it. Uh, and I don't talk about it for partisan reasons. I try to keep my own personal opinion out of these videos and out of this channel. Uh, but what I do want to talk about though is how the elections might affect our investing game and how it might affect the stock market going forward. And as most of you know, a lot of my investments are in fact American stocks. So even though I'm Canadian and I don't have a horse in this race and I didn't get to vote in this race at all, uh, whatever happens in the election obviously still affects me. And I thought that a lot of you might be in a similar situation, right? Maybe you're a fellow Canadian or maybe you're from another country other than America, but you have uh, investments in American institutions. Uh, well, I thought it'd be worthwhile to make a video and talk about it and keep you guys updated as to what's going on. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump in. Okay, so I'm recording this on Thursday night, and I guess it's technically Friday morning because it's past midnight now, I believe, uh, but we're still waiting on the results of the election. And I do believe that this is the closest American election we've seen since year 2000. And honestly, guys, it could go either way, okay? So whether you're a supporter of Trump or you're a supporter of Biden, I do think that it's still way too early for either side to be celebrating at this point, uh, seeing as we have several swing states uh, that are still up for grabs, including Pennsylvania, Georgia, North Carolina, Arizona, and Nevada. And to add to the confusion, President Trump has vowed to take legal action all over the country, claiming that there's widespread fraud and uh, some votes need to be thrown out or recounted. And man, all of this can surely be really stressful watching this election unfold. And if I were you, I'd pick up my free $10 when you sign up and trade your first $100 worth of stocks using Wealthsimple well Trade. Links down in the description for that. I'm sorry guys, you know how to do that, right? So uh, anyways, I know a lot of my viewers are Canadian, so you might not be familiar with how the American election work and how the electoral college uh, system works. Uh, so I'm not going to waste time trying to explain it myself. As I said, this is not a politics channel. So uh, frankly, I do think that other people can do a better job at explaining the electoral college anyways. Uh, so I'll link a video down below in case you want to watch that video explaining how the electoral college works. Uh, and then you can come back to watch this video. But uh, just to summarize really briefly though, uh, each state has a certain number of electoral votes and a candidate needs 270 electoral votes in order to win the presidency. Uh, so I'll show you a map of what that looks like right now. And once again, it's now Friday morning. And I just want to point out that although it looks like Joe Biden is leading, don't let that distract you because each state has a different amount of electoral votes. And if Trump wins a big state, like for example, Pennsylvania, which is 20 electoral votes, he could easily catch up. So on election night, I invited a couple friends over for an election night party. And uh, don't worry, it wasn't a big group because obviously we got to watch out for the Roni situation. Uh, and one of my friends is a registered nurse and she helps screen everyone at the door. So uh, yeah, we were trying to take every precaution necessary. Yeah, so anyways, I was watching the election on Tuesday night and I was getting flashbacks from 2016 because honestly, I was not expecting this race to be this close at all. Uh, so we have polls predicting that it was going to be a landslide win for Biden and the Democrats uh, and that Joe Biden had like a 95% chance of winning and it turns out it's literally like neck and neck. I mean, he still has a chance of winning, but uh, it's, it's going to be close. So it looks like the polls were wrong once again, and even people in 2020, it looks like we're really underestimating Trump or overestimating Biden, or maybe it's a combination of the two. But this is why it's so important to vote, guys, regardless of what the polls say. Uh, but you know what's even weirder though? So I was watching the election unfold and I was like, this is the exact nightmare scenario for the stock market, right? Uh, so it's a contested election and there's no clear winner. You know, if one of the two sides clearly wins, then that's fine, right? Because at least we get some clarity. Uh, but this kind of limbo state where we're just sort of in the middle and we're a wall waiting right on the results and we're just like not doing anything well that's the exact type of result i expected to crash the stock market but no guess what happened the stock market is absolutely skyrocketing so the s p 500 and the dow are both up around two percent today after going up another like i think it was like three percent or two percent yesterday as well uh, and the nasdaq was up two and a half percent today uh, so this one kind of stumped me a little bit and to be quite honest i did not see this coming at all uh, so i ran into some 
explanations from other people that try to explain what happens. So, for example, I was watching Jim Cramer, and his explanation is basically that the markets are adjusting uh, to a potential Biden victory because it does look like he's leading right now. Uh, so it looks like that the markets are adjusting to a Biden potential victory of the presidency, uh, but the Republicans may control the Senate. So in this specific scenario, which is the most likely at the moment, the Dems would win the House and the presidency and the Republicans would retain control of the Senate. Uh, so in this scenario, it will hinder a lot of the plans that the Democrats had in place, right? Because uh, we kind of were expecting a blue wave and a landslide victory for the Dems, uh, according to the polls. So we were kind of expecting the Dems to sweep the Senate too. But uh, it looks like that uh, if Biden wins the presidency and the Republicans control the Senate, that might hinder the upcoming stimulus package, which might be a lot smaller uh, than what the Democrats want. Uh, so if Biden wants to also raise corporate taxes and things like that and implement tax policy, uh, he might have a much harder time without the control of the Senate. So therefore, according to Kramer, people are selling out of a lot of companies that are in need of maybe a stimulus package, i.e. like cyclical companies, uh, and putting the money into high growth stock like tech stocks, which cost causes the tech-heavy Nasdaq to absolutely skyrocket. Uh, and not to mention that at the same time of the presidential elections, California did pass Proposition 22. And if you're not caught up with what that is, uh, it's basically a provision that allows drivers, like Uber drivers, uh, to working for companies like Uber and Lyft to be classified as contractors rather than uh, full-time employees. And obviously as Uber and Lyft, from the company's perspective, you want the drivers to be contractors because uh, if they're employees, you have to spend a lot more money maintaining them and giving them benefits and you gotta set regular hours for them and everything. Uh, so I do believe that uh, Uber and Lyft are still losing money on every ride. So keeping costs down is a huge deal for them. And if they're forced to classify drivers as full-time employees, well, long-term that could threaten the company's very existence because that could hurt their bottom lines a lot. Uh, so it's a contentious topic for sure. And it's not as one-sided as you guys think actually, because uh, some of the drivers actually prefer to be contractors as well uh, from their own perspective, uh, just because you know one of the benefits of being a contractor is that you can turn the app on and off whenever you want, right? So that's kind of the point of Uber. Uh, but if you have to work regular hours as a full-time employee, I'm not sure how that would work with Uber. So it'll turn into more of a situation like if you were an actual taxi driver working for an actual taxi company, which uh, kind of disrupts the entire business model of Uber and Lyft altogether, right? That's just not in line with uh, what the business model of those apps are. Uh, anyways, uh, the proposition was passed though, which means that Uber drivers will be able to be labeled as contractors. And as a result, shares in Uber and Lyft absolutely went berserkers, right? They just went through the roof. And I bet that that has added to the momentum of the stock market. And as to why I personally think that the stock market is skyrocketing, well, I'm just gonna speculate a bit because once again, I was not expecting this move at all, right? I was literally expecting the stock market to crash. Uh, but I think that now that I've taken a bit of time to really think about it and take a step back and look at it from like a more objective perspective, uh, it could be a combination of the reasons that I just mentioned, like Jim Cramer's reason, but also my explanation for that is simply that the stock market tends to just do the exact opposite of what the vast majority of people expect. Uh, and what I mean by that is that when the Roni situation first started to pick up back in January and February, uh, the markets didn't really care, right? So I think that a lot of people figured out that it was going to come over to Europe and North America. And we had a lot of warning signs, but the stock market just didn't really care. And that's because the consensus at the time was that it wasn't that big of an issue uh, and that for whatever reason, people just didn't think that it was going to be a big deal. And then the stock market started to crash back in March. Uh, so after that, the stock market started to recover. And I think that the majority of opinion was that uh, there was going to be a second crash. So the breakout that we saw at the beginning of April and May, uh, a lot of people thought that that was a fake breakout, right? So in fact, I think that I was one of the people that thought that there was going to be a second crash as well, uh, but there wasn't. And the market just kept on going up until it was right back to where it was back in January, right? So uh, let me say this though, in my defense, I didn't liquidate my entire account like a lot of other people here on YouTube. YouTube did uh, and I didn't liquidate my entire account for this exact reason uh, the markets tend to just do the opposite of what you're expecting it to do uh, and if you think about it, it makes sense right because crashes tend to happen when people are least expecting it because if you were expecting it then you would have sold out and if too many people did that exact same thing then that in of itself would cause the stock market to crash uh, so if a stock market were to crash then that means that most people weren't expecting it 
Uh, so I know that was kind of confusing, so please rewind the video like 30 seconds if you need to watch that again. Uh, but anyways, uh, I think that it's also true the other way around, right? Uh, when the majority of people are expecting a crash, well then maybe that actually makes a crash less likely. Uh, because as we just mentioned, crashes happen when people aren't expecting it. And it's just saying that this election was an example of a situation where people thought it was going to be one thing, but it turns out to be the other, right? So uh, people thought that there was going to be a crash of the election was contested, and this election turned out to be very contested. Uh, but instead of going down, the markets actually went up. So. Uh, what can I say? It'd be like that sometimes, right? Uh, anyways, just wanted to share an update with you guys and we'll have to see where this election goes because it ha definitely hasn't ended yet and it's going to be interesting to see where this race lands tomorrow. We'll probably get a lot more clear answers in about 24 hours. So uh, by the time you watch this video, maybe we'll already have a winner. Uh, so anyways, exciting times. I'll leave the video here for today. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing if you like the series. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, links down below in the description as always. And with that being said, see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.